In the thousands of planets humanity has discovered, we've begun to see patterns. We've been able to make our first predictions of how common certain types of planets are in the universe, and where we expect to find them. However, with all the planets we've found, we seem to have come across a gap in our knowledge. We found a category of planet that we expect to see often, but doesn't seem to show up anywhere. We've discovered dozens of planets with orbits that last less than a day around their stars, but the majority of them been large, Jupiter-sized planets, or smaller, Earth-sized planets. There's a significant lack of Neptune-sized planets with orbital periods lasting less than two days around Sun-like stars. For some reason, these planets, which should be common, aren't seen. This is the Neptunian desert, and there isn't a concrete solution to what causes it. However, we know that this type of ultra-hot ice giant is not impossible. We know of a handful of planets that reside in the Neptunian desert, but far less than there should be. Two notable examples of Neptunian desert planets are NGTS-4b, an ice giant 20 times the mass of Earth, and LTT-9779b, also known as Quankoa, which is nearly 30 times the size of Earth. There's also GJ-3470b, also known as Felincium, which is about 14 times the size of Earth, but takes a bit over three days to orbit its star, Caucasian, and so is just outside the Neptunian desert. Another on-edge case is Hat P26b, or Guatalba, which takes four days to orbit its star. Of these Neptunian desert planets, we know the most about Quankoa and Felincium. Quankoa has the highest known albedo of any exoplanet to date, meaning it is the most reflective. Quankoa reflects about 80% of the light that hits its surface back into space, and that's likely because it's covered with a thick layer of reflective clouds made of vaporized silicates, as well as a metal-rich atmosphere. Quankoa will be studied by the James Webb Space Telescope to discover more about it. JWST will also study Felincium and Guatalba in the near future. But so far, with everything we know about the atmospheres of these planets, there's still a lot we don't know. Why are they so rare? Is it just that they are hard to create in the first place, or are they being destroyed by something? Are there any solutions as to why Neptunian desert planets are so rare? So far, the most likely option seems to be stellar radiation. Beings that close to the star, the atmospheres of Neptune-sized planets might be stripped away over billions of years, leaving nothing but the exposed core behind. This is what's happening to planet Felincium, which is losing atmosphere at a rate of anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000 tons per second. That equates to losing half an Earth's worth of material every billion years, assuming the 100,000 ton number is true. At that rate, Felincium's atmosphere will be gone in just a few billion years, leaving only a rocky core behind. Larger gas giants are able to resist losing atmosphere as fast due to their higher gravity and because they simply have more gas than ice giants. So, they manage to stay intact while Neptune-sized planets do not. The rocky planets we find at similar orbital distances could be the exposed cores of these dead ice giants, or form there on their own, since rocks are harder to blast away than air. So, if this is the case, then how come NGTS-4b and Quankoa are still around? The answer is likely because of their age. Quankoa, for example, is only 1.7 billion years old, just a little over a third the age of the solar system. Because of this, it hasn't had enough time to lose all of its atmosphere, and so remains an ice giant to this day. The Neptunian desert is a prime example about how dynamic our universe can be, and how the laws of the government determine which types of planets can exist, and which ones can't. Thank you for watching.